listening to Filling the Storehouse podcast. I'm David. And I'm Stuart. And we want to walk with you on the journey to living the abundant life through faith, family, and freedom. Our goal is to refine our why while helping you find yours. Together, achieve our best and highest purpose. In the end, we'll drive each other to intentionally fill our storehouse. What's up, Storehouse Tribe? Hey, this is Stu. And uh, hey, I just wanted to hit on one of the tenets of this podcast, uh, Financial Freedom. David and I honestly think that um, the best way to get to financial freedom is through real estate investing. We've been uh, investing in real estate for quite some time. And um, one of the coolest things about real estate is uh, the relationships that, uh, that we are able to create. Um, we basically use partners on every single deal that we do, um, both in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for our, our turnkey rental company and through some of our bigger deals. You know, we've done some stuff, uh, some commercial properties here in Colorado where we live and, and we're looking to do more. Um, so if that's something that sounds of interest to you, we'd love to uh, kind of tell you what, what we got going on, what we're doing. Um, we're looking for more partners. We love building relationships and having, um, you know, that, that trust with, with our partners and, and the ability to offer opportunities uh, to, to invest alongside with us. Um, if that's something of interest, hey, reach out to us. We'd love to jump on the phone. We'd love to jump on a Zoom call, tell you what we're up to. Um, you can reach out to us through uh, social media channels. You can hit us up on LinkedIn. You can hit us up on Facebook. Well, hit up me on Facebook. Don't, don't hit up David. Uh, you can send us an email. Um, you can go to our website, storehouse310turnkey, and uh, go to the Contact Us page. Send us an email at podcast at storehouse310turnkey. Any of those options, reach out. Let's talk real estate, and we'd love to tell you what we're, what we're up to. Um, enjoy this episode. Most importantly, go fill your storehouse. See you. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is uh, Stu and Dave, and uh, this is Filling the Storehouse podcast. And we have a really, really cool guest today, uh, Rich Fetke. Um, I've, Rich, I've been following you for a long time, man. And su I'm super excited to have you on. Um, I'll tell you, uh, I watched one of your webinars years ago. And one of the quotes that you gave um, has, has honestly like kind of changed the way I look at life. Um, and it's a quote you said, uh, do something to, today that your future self will thank you for later. Mm, mm. And, uh, and I, I like printed it out, posted it on my vision board in my office. And uh, awesome. I, I look at it all the time. So I just want to say, thank you. Uh, you've been, you've made a huge impact uh, to me on my life. Um, and uh, we're going to dive into your story and, and the book that you just wrote also a huge impact. Um, we just kind of read through that ahead of time and um, it's, it's been great, man. So Welcome to the show. Appreciate you. Thank you. On. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to it. This is great. Yeah. Um, so if you could, for our audience, uh, most of our listeners are, are real estate investors, entrepreneurs, business uh, men and women. But uh, for those that maybe haven't heard of you, um, give us a little background, who, who, who you are, where you came mm -hmm. from and what you're doing. Sure. Yeah. Maybe why I got into real estate investing, really going yeah. back, um, you know, it was 20 years ago, I was on the top of my game. I had uh, this amazing wife, Kathy Fetke, who some of your listeners might be aware of, um, and two wonderful daughters, uh, a thriving coaching practice. And I just signed a book deal with Simon and Schuster. So I was feeling on the top of my game. Uh, and then I was diagnosed with melanoma, uh, which is a skin cancer, I'm ginger, and it happens. <laughs> um, so um, the doctors, uh, after they did a surgery to remove the melanomas from me, they asked me to get a scan to make sure that it hadn't spread and they saw four masses on my liver. So after multiple tests and scans, uh, I met with an oncologist and he told me I had six months to live. So my daughters were 10 and three and um, it just rocked my world. And it rocked Kathy's world because Kathy at the time was a stay at home mom taking care of our girls. And uh, so she's like, what am I going to do here? And she had this small radio show in San Francisco that she was kind of a pay to play type thing where she was interviewing people uh, for coaching topics about getting the most out of life and being your best self and all that. And she's like, I have to scramble. I have to do something here to make ends meet if Rich dies. 
And so she started to have guests on her show that were financially successful and they happened to be real estate investors, most of them. And so she started to get obsessed with it. She came home and she said, I know what I can do. I can invest in real estate. This is my way. And um, then luckily the doctor's diagnosis was wrong. Uh, the melanoma hadn't spread to my liver. Uh, it was just hemangiomas that show up as looks like cancer. Uh, but I got a PET scan that showed me that I was a cancer free. Uh, but you know, with every curse comes a blessing really. And that's motivated Kathy to find mentors, to start investing, to get us investing. And we both went to, um, to Texas and bought a bunch of rental properties. And then we had friends and family and other people and people and listening to Kathy's show saying, how did you do it? And we just decided to form what we thought would be a small network of people, uh, friends and family mostly. And uh, today that network 20 years later has grown to over 64,000 members now. So we've helped a lot of people create financial freedom and improve their financial intelligence. So it's quite a blessing. So that's where we are today. Real Wealth is our company. And that's what we help people do. Kathy has her podcast, um, often out speaking at conferences, like where I met you guys. And uh, um, yeah, that's kind of the story. That's what brought us to where we are now, helping other people invest in real estate and doing it ourselves, walking the talk. Yeah, that's that's an incredible story. And I'll tell you, it's funny because it was ringing through my head. Uh, Stu and I recently ran a, a number of of uh, just awesome dudes in our network through an exercise. And today, actually, after this meeting, we'll, they'll, they'll be reading us their eulogies. That, that was oh, the assignment is that we, we assigned them to read their eulogies. And, awesome. and for some of them, it was the first time they'd ever you know heard that concept. I know the first time I went through it was with a different group. But uh, but when you were talking about six months to live, like there's nothing more real. Like doing an exercise to write your eulogy is, you know, it can be powerful, but a doctor telling you you have six months to live. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you got to write uh, it quick. <laughs> you better you better figure it out. But but like you said, there's such blessing in in the clarity that that I know is a result of such a dire, you know, diagnosis. But then to to come out of it, you know, to take action, man. Like you guys are amazing individuals. And I'm, and I'm curious too, on what you're doing before that, if it was the coaching or like the, the mindset to be able to not feel sorry for yourself and just wallow in that grief waiting for, you know, the inevitable, but to take action and to think about uh, next steps. Like, I'm just curious, how did you get to that point? Like, were you guys, I know you were coaching. Is it just a, a developed mindset that, that really drove you towards that? How, how'd that happen? Yeah. And, um, there was a lot of tears. There was a lot of fear from, from me. You know, I remember bouncing on the trampoline with my three-year-old daughter and we just started to laugh and we fell down on top of each other or she fell on top of me, luckily. And, um, we're just giggling. And all of a sudden I just realized that I might not see her grow up or see her mm -hmm. get married. And I just broke down in tears. So it's like, there was some tears in that, you know, and those, it was several months of not knowing, uh, and at the same time, um, Kathy and I actually met in a personal development workshop. It was a three month program where you set personal and professional goals and you get very vulnerable and real and you learn about mindset training and, and all that. So, so yeah, that helped a lot. It helped us focus not so much on the fear, um, and being an adventure athlete, I had dealt with a lot of fears of doing some crazy stuff and how to deal with those fears. So kind of brought that in as well. And just kind of like kind of connecting with that fear and being like, what do you need from me right now? And that really helped a lot. That's incredible. Was there, was there anything that, um, you know, after getting that news, like, was there anything that maybe you had been doing before that you were like, all right, I'm done cutting this out of my life. I, I'm changing the way I'm doing things. I'm changing my habits or like, you know, did you like start creating a list of everything that you wanted to do before, before, you know, that time came, like what, you know, what, like, what was the react, like, what, what action steps were you like changing, you know? Yeah. there was, I mean, two things. Yes. And yes. So one yeah. was this really cool confirmation because I had been coaching for, I was, it was probably, I don't know, almost 10 years at that point and a uh, little bit less, but I, I had been coaching and studying all this personal development, everything. So for me, I was, really grateful that I was living life. And I used to take every Friday off to, to go do some type of adventure. I would always do the weekly date night with Kathy. And so there's a lot of things where I'm like, I said to Kathy, I'm like, I am so glad that I lived my life. I'm so glad that I didn't just, you know, spend all my time in the office and not be around. So there was that confirmation and that blessing. And at the same time, what my big aha was for me was like, how have I been showing up as a person, you know, just like that eulogy exercise. It's like, 
um, how do I want to be, you know, you know, when I survive this, that's, that was my mindset. When I survive this, um, what kind of person do I want to be? How do I want to shift? And it just had me become way more focused out, um, much more humble, much more present with the people I love and the people I care about and really shifted from, I guess, a little selfish, you know, in those, you know, 30 year old years to really fo focusing on significance and, you know, focused out on how can I contribute? How can I, what's my purpose type stuff. So that, that was the biggest shift for me is like how I show up. What's, what's that best version of me and how can I have that, that guy show up more often um, yeah. when I survive this. I love that. And that's what, you know, that's what you talked about at uh, the best ever conference this last year was, you know, being the best version of you and, yeah. and showing up and, and how, how do you do that? And, you know, David and I have been uh, on this journey in the last couple of years, you know, we've been, we're reaching 20 years of, of military service. We're retiring, we're transitioning. It's a big transition to civilian life. And, you know, we had trying to been trying to build this business, our real estate business. And, um, we kind of found ourselves, uh, in this spot where like, we were just working all the time, you know, we'd work on the real estate business. We'd go to Navy work. We'd come home, we'd work on the real estate business more. And we were just churning and churning and trying to grow it and big at builder and hire people. And, mm. and then like one day, like me personally, I was just like, and, and like this stuff, like the eulogy, right. the eulogy and figuring it out. And, um, I was like, what am I, what am I doing all this for? And yeah. we had another guy on our podcast and, and he had a similar type, uh, situation and he told him or he, he said you know my kids will never remember me for sitting in front of the computer and working more like right. they're going to remember me for like time spent with them and doing things Huge. with them and it was a it was a total wake-up call for the both of us and and so you know i i'm curious kind of what what habits are you doing on a regular basis uh you know in your daily life uh, to be the best version of you, you know, to focus on, on, on your growth. Mm, I think it is so much about habits. I think you nailed it with that one. It's like, yeah, those, it's almost like those algorithms, you know, if this, yeah. then that, right. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It's like, if this happens, I'm, this is the way I'm going to show up. If I do this. Yeah. I'm, I mean, there's, there's, I get up every morning and uh, early. I get up at 5 a.m. every day. Um, the first thing I do is meditate for 10, 15 minutes. Um, there's gratefulness in there and prayer and just getting centered. So that that's a huge one. And it has me reflect on who am I? You know, how, how am I showing up? Um, I do morning yoga and, um, with, with some weird stuff mixed in there. Like I, I have to do 10 burpees and, and 10, uh, I mean, 20 push ups, and I do a um, hundred crunches. And then I've been doing that for uh, since 2008. Um, That's awesome. So things like that, to just, you know, one develop that part, that self-discipline part of the brain, you know, and which we would, I love that we can actually improve our willpower and our self-discipline just by being self-disciplined, it actually activates and, and lays down neural pathways in that area of the brain that develops self-discipline. So I found that doing that and the more consistent I am with the rituals that I've committed to, the more, more disciplined I become. And that shows up with the meditation too, because that's a discipline of being present and being aware and being in the moment. So I think it's just helped me really develop more of that. You know, I still have a long way to go, but definitely learning how to be way more present with Kathy, with our daughters, with, with anyone, you know, with, with friends. Yeah. Meditating yeah. is hard. <laughs> it is. Especially for someone like me, man. I tell you yeah. what, I'm like, I am all over the place. Um, <laughs> but you know, that exercise, I'm going to try that exercise. Maybe I can walk myself through it. That, that you, um, that John ran Ryan through in the book with the, uh, the, the light going out in space and then coming back 10 years later. I, I like that. You know, like, yeah, I think I could get future self like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is, yeah, that's future self. Exactly. Yeah. And actually, uh, you know, one, one thing I did for, um, for the book in the back, there's a resource, a resource center and, um, uh, people can go to a website and I've got a 10 minute future self visualization. So yeah. So you have to, you have to go check that one out. I think you'll like it and just kind of guide you through that. And, um, yeah, it's a cool process. I love, I love that process. I've been doing the future self visualization for so many years, ever since college. Um, it's been powerful for me. It's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And it's uh, realwealth.com slash uh, backslash grow. There's a ton of awesome resources there from the book that, um, 
you know, that I, that I am extremely grateful for free resources. Anybody can go to them. It's great. Um, yeah. but, but I, uh, you know, one thing that you just said that I absolutely love, Stu and I are always talking about action, right. And, and what's really funny is people are asking me now more, you know, every time we're, we're kind of new back into the community here in Colorado, just moved back. Um, you know, I, I just came back six months ago and, and, you know, people are like, Hey, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I'm like, man, you know, here's the deal. I, I'm, I am dedicated to starting this men's mastermind that we're starting. I was like, but I have to make it work because I've gotten very, very used to uh, making the kids breakfast every morning, taking them to school. Mm. This is stuff I couldn't do in the military. I've never done this. This is the last six months, but oh, wow. taking them awesome. to school in the morning, uh, you know, picking them all up from school in the afternoon, walking back from the bus stop, being the first face they see when they, you know, when they come home awesome. uh, and, and, and coaching, coaching my kids sports. And, and then date day, Friday is date day for my wife and I would go on a hike. We, she's very active. She's uh, much, much better shape than I am. I need to catch up, but, um, <laughs> but we have these things that we built in and then Stu and I have a, effectively a date day as well that we're setting for Thursdays. Um, and so we're, we're really prioritizing these things and it's compressing the calendar. But, but what you said really just, it was very encouraging to me without you even knowing it, but it's, you choose to do these things, you choose to set the schedule and then you build, you prioritize and you build around that mm. and, and effectively you just do it. And then when you <laughs> said, Hey, I told Kathy, I'm just so grateful. I'm living life. I think we all wait to live life until a day that we, that's not even promised. Yeah. And it just really impacted me as you're talking about that. I'm like, man, it's these things that you want to do. Everything else you have to figure out, yeah, but the right. things that you want to do, you just do it. Mm -hmm. and you just set that as a priority. And, and, and I, I'm curious because at the time you said you're doing that, you hadn't had all these investments. It was, this was before, you know, it sounds like you were still very deep in the coaching business. So you hadn't necessarily quote unquote made it but you right. still did these things. I'm, I'm curious how you like, just how that, how that worked and specifically financially where you were at the time that you're still choosing to do that. Yeah. I mean, doing, I was, we were doing decent with my coaching, you know, I am making a decent coaching income. And then I was also uh, speaking, I was a keynote speaker. So that was, you know, that was building and growing and then the, and then the book deal and everything. So doing, well financially um definitely not financial independence you know i was you know i was working for it no no doubt about it transactional um but there was a piece in there about you know honestly i think it was having my own coach having my own coach which i still do today i talk to my coach every every two weeks and um it was every week for a while you know for many years and then we just went to every every other week and basically it's someone to hold up the mirror and to be bold and honest and to be like, you know, to not let me slip around to be like, how are you living rich? How are you operating? And to rate like in the book where the, the mentor John asked Ryan to rate these 10 areas of his life and rating it between zero and a 10, 10 being, you know, completely satisfied, zero meaning it just sucked. And he just went around and rated all these things. And that's, that's what I was doing consistently too, for my own life. I still do it today. I fill out one of those life wheels every three to six months. And just to check in and be like, am I living a, a fairly balanced life? You know, I know it's never going to be balanced, balance and set, you know, but it's constantly moving and shifts and all that. But uh, it's a real big awareness creator, which I think is the, I think that's the huge thing for coaching and just having, having you look in the mirror and being aware of how you're showing up and how you're living life. So that's what really worked for me. Let's, let's, let's talk about, uh, let's get into the book a little bit. So you just wrote a book called The Wise Investor um, and uh, it hit the streets. Uh, it's out on ebook right now, correct? Yeah, came out ebook first. The audio book will be out end of next month and then uh, hardcover in August because there are just supply chain issues and waiting for the printers, all that stuff. Okay, and so what, uh, what, what caused you to, write this book and if you could just give a little bit of, a, of, of you know the story of, of what the book is all about yeah it's um so my first book was called extreme success and it was a non-fiction book about comparing I'm like I said I'm an adventure athlete so it's comparing extreme sports to success in business and life um so that was my first one 20 years ago that was my book I thought I read it I mean I thought I just I wrote my book I was done <laughs> and but my coach I had sent him a copy of that and he kept nudging me. He's like, when are you going to write your next book? And I'm like, I'm done. And, 
But then I started to, uh, we started to do story branding. Are you fam familiar with that? For the business? Yeah. So yes. Don Miller created yep. this thing, uh, comes from Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey. And yeah. so we started up about four years ago, we started to apply story branding. Um, his book is building a story brand. And so we started to apply that to real wealth and seeing our customer as the hero, not us. And we're just the guide and to really serve and to follow that hero's journey. And I got really into this whole storytelling thing. I just thought it was fascinating the more I learned about it. And that's, I just mentioned that once in a coaching session, I'm like, you know, I, if I was going to write a book, it would, I'd probably do a story like a parable. And then that was, that was the spark. So you do that with it. a good coach and he's going to hold you to it. It's right? like, yeah, exactly. It's like, shit. <laughs> I should have <laughs> said that. So he did hold me to it and uh, it took me about a year and a half. And it was just awesome because uh, Kathy and I interview on, the, on, on her podcast, we interview a lot of the members of our network uh, to hear their journey, where they were, what they did and where they are now. And so a lot of those stories, I was just like, man, this, I want to share this with the world. I want to share our story and what we've learned. And I also want to share these principles that so many people aren't aware of. I know a lot of your listeners are, but there's a lot of people who don't realize um, the benefits of real estate, say over stocks, right? Or crypto or any of that, or, or just work in the W2 and, and all that. So the, so the story Basically, it follows this guy, Ryan Brooks, who he's a, he's a father, he's a husband, he's a really hardworking employee, but he works so many hours that he doesn't have time for his wife or his kids or even his life. And then he makes this new friend and a new mentor who shows him just a different path to financial freedom and security for his family, for himself. And he just walks him through this. And um, it, yeah, it just... It was a it was a cool chance for me to really step back with this mentor and say, who is that wise mentor? And basically, it's my future self. If I turn out that good and that wise, <laughs> it's my future self in the future. Uh, so I was able to just constantly come back from that and say, what advice would my future self give this guy? And what and how would he encourage him? And what lessons would he teach? And all that. So it goes beyond um, real estate investing. It's definitely a big part of it. But there's lessons around being a better husband, being a superior man, being a better dad, being more present. Big lessons on how wealthy people think versus non-wealthy people think. He talks about what real wealth really is. And it's not just about making lots of money. Now it's about, and you guys read the book. So it's really about having the money, but also the freedom to live life on your own terms. And so there's a, there's a lot of lessons in that, that I just wanted to share. And I thought a story would, I know that a story connects more emotionally and that elicits a change in people where you can read a nonfiction book and get the facts and the figures and, and all that, but a story, it really does something to what I've learned through coaching it. It has people move, has people take action, has people shift their mindset, see things in a different way. So that's why a parable. <laughs> Yeah, it was incredible. One of my favorite lines uh, in the book, you know, I'm going to butcher it a little bit, but you said, um, I think John was talking, he said, some of the poorest people I know make the most money, or it was something like that. Uh, and, some and people I, are so poor, all they have is money. That's right. Some people are so poor. All they have. I love that line. Yeah, so because, good. You know, and I read it like four times. I'm like, wait, what? And, and I was, I, and I kept reading it just to let it sink in, but it was such a, such a powerful line. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I, you know, and, and I would, I would offer for our listeners that, you know, depending on where you are in life, you're going to take different things from the story, but, but I think the financial advice and, and the, the mindset change versus employee and the wealthy, I think are, are extremely important and very intriguing. And, and I loved all that, but I think I really, really appreciated the mindset, the mindset and the prioritization of life and the mm -hmm. things that John was helping him come to. Cause I think a lot of us also miss out on, we miss out on that piece. We don't realize that, that there are other ways to think. And we don't realize something is simple now to me that, Hey, prioritization shows it is time. Like my kids, like Stu had said earlier, my kids are not going to remember how much I work for them. No matter how much I tell them I'm doing this for you and for our future. Well, is it really true? Is that what we're really doing? And, and, yeah. and are we really achieving that goal? And I think sometimes when we step back, we realize I want so much more and it doesn't mean I want so much more money or cars or <laughs> <Right>. whatever. <laughs> or boats or whatever. Yeah. Or yeah. Whatever it is. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, those are and, great. Those are great, but yeah, they're secondary. 
Yeah. And, and so I, I really love that about your book and you bringing out the, I mean, there were times I was sitting out yesterday finishing the book and I'm looking at my kids playing, uh, you know, with power tools and stuff. So I was a little bit concerned, but they're doing that. <laughs> and I'm, I'm reading this book and I started like tearing up, you know, like I just mm. got really emotional about, yeah. because the book, the story makes you reflect on your own story. And, and, and my face was Ryan's face, you know, and, oh, and man. Like, dude, you're making face. me tear up here. Well, <laughs> I, tell, I tell you, though, it was so powerful for me, because I'm looking at my kids, and I'm like, what am I doing with my life mm. to honor what God has given me? And it's not the house, it's, it's these little human beings. And they're going to then emulate what I teach them. Big time. And, and, and mm. that is such a, I'm getting emotional too. Jeez, we're just going to have an emotional podcast. We, we have emotional podcast. We have had so some where we are all crying on our podcast before. So this might be another one. Uh -oh. I started wearing glasses. I started wearing glasses for that purpose. Um, but no, I just want to thank you for that. But I also encourage people to look in the book and really, I think there's so much richness, not only in the, the wealth advisement side of it, but in, in, the, in the life advisement side of it and the mm. prioritization and recognizing, okay, I need to take stock of what I'm really doing this for. And they're so powerful. That's awesome. I'm so glad I communicated that. And it's like, yeah, when I sat down to really think about what is it that I want to share? What are, what are those big lessons that are just have a huge impact on me? And from those stories of our members at Real Wealth, uh, that's, you know, that was the big one. It was time and being present and in all that. And then, then, uh, then the kind of the sub lessons under that were, you know, taking good care of yourself. And the, some people are so poor, all they have is money line is because, you know, Kathy and I live in Malibu and there's a lot of money. There's a lot of wealth around here. I would say more money than wealth <laughs> if we're looking yeah. at real wealth. And um, it's amazing. You know, our daughter went to Malibu high school and she would come home and she'd tell us the stories about some of these families who have so much money, but their parents are never there, or there's, you know, they're on the brink of a divorce or going through that. Uh, the kids feel completely just abandoned. Um, yeah. So it's just like, you know, yeah. Why, why what, what's all that money for? It's, I think the ego gets wrapped into that or, or something. So yeah, that, that's huge for me. Well, and there's something else that uh, you put in the book that I I've never uh, seen before and, and never really thought about it. And I don't know why, but you know, you're, I think John was explaining to Ryan about assets and liabilities, and he was going to, you know, supposed to list out all of his assets and liabilities. And, you know, you always normally you hear of, of an asset being something that provides money, right? Right. Or, and a liability is something that costs you money, but, but you added some other things on there too, that are also ability or are also uh, liabilities and assets or, you know, you're something that provides money, time, health, or happiness mm. and liabilities are those that cost time, health, happiness, and money. And, and I've never thought of assets and liabilities that way for those other things besides just money. Um, and I loved it. it. It was like, Oh yeah. Like an asset could be something that just provides me better health or better happiness or more time to be able to spend with my family. Yeah. I thought that was really, really cool the way you put that in, in the book. Awesome. Um, I'm, so I'm curious, like what, what are some of the things that, that you found are assets to helping you provide more health or like happiness or time? Just curious. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that, that came, um, it was just like this, aha on a hike. I was going through a difficult time with a friend. I'd been friends with him for probably about eight years. And uh, it was, we used to hang out a lot and go rock climbing together and surf together and do all this stuff. Uh, it was always a, a little bit of, of friction in the relationship. And, um, and then we had this falling out. He got in an argument with Kathy. I took Kathy's side. Not, I'm just stuck up for my wife, you know, and he got pissed and it just and our relationship fell apart and he was just ghosting me. He wouldn't talk to me. And I was like, Whoa, I've never had this happen. And when I look back and, and still now we're not friends, he's just, he's just written me off. And I, I was on this hike thinking about that. And it really hit me hard. You know, he's a good friend. And I started to look at that going, wow. When I look back at our relationship, he felt kind of toxic and, and more of a liability is what it came up for me. Yeah. And I was like, wow, he was kind of like, he was detracting from my life in so many ways. I was always trying to please him and, and never really had that experience. So that's what kind of sparked it for me. And then I just, and, you know, then 
come came back and wrote, wrote that lesson down. And then it just kind of built from there. I'm like, wow, in our business, you know, you talk about your business, right? What's the greatest asset? Your team, yeah. right? The people in your business. And it's right. like, well, those are assets. They bring you more income and more happiness and all that. And yeah, your health. And then I think our greatest asset is our, is our, our mind, you know, and it's like what we can do with it. We can continue to, to grow and improve and, and learn. And so that's a huge asset too. So anything like that. So something can be an asset. I think of like um, something like, you know, getting a, a new surfboard or something, you know what I mean? It's an expense, right? And you can yeah. look at it as a liability, but that, you know, that can bring a lot of happiness. So it's looking at it, putting through that filter and just say, well, let's see, this is kind of an investment. This is going to bring up a lot of happiness over the years. So it's, I'm trying to, I'm going to buy this asset. So you can yeah. justify with it, you know, but you have to be careful. But that's kind of the way I saw it. I'm going to tell my wife that, uh, you know, a really nice new mountain bike is is an asset because it's absolutely a lot of <laughs> a lot of happiness over the next few years. It sure does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that. good. I tell you, Rich, one, and you don't even know, you don't know this, but um, reading that book also, it gave me permission to uh to embrace the idea of three very very focused work days creating what we want to do uh within the confines of of spending time with my family Mm -hmm. and then the time that Stu and i have set aside on thursdays while while always fun it's it's the focus is fun there's so much richness in the conversation when we're relaxed, we're hiking a mountain, we're, you know, yeah. not fly fishing. Usually if we're fly fishing, I'm, I'm too busy catching fish and Stu's too busy, like, t- you know, getting his, his, his line out of the tree, but, but which can also be an exercise of patience, you yeah. know, but uh, <laughs> next time we go, I'm going to get skunked. But, um, but, but just the time together, the time to recenter, to focus, and then go to Friday where my wife, you know, is, is focused on health and wellness, uh, a business she's trying to grow but the time that we spend in the mountains talking about the kids, talking about our marriage, all those things are, those assets have paid so much more, so many more dividends mm-hmm. in six months than, than being completely chock full with a command, a Navy command job from sunrise to sunset and then running a business on either end of that and then fitting kids in there. Um, and even the way I say that fitting kids in there, <laughs> yeah, like, you, you actually like, I've been very much focused and enjoying it, but reading your book just gave permission to realize the most wealthy people in the world are not always those with the most money. And so that, I, you know, just to pile on what Stu said, that was, I'll be honest with you, that was mind blowing for me awesome. to, to, to put li- assets and liabilities and to count things that take time or energy away and add time and energy. Cause if I'm fulfilled and I'm full of energy, like, like last night, I could not sleep because of you. I blame you, Rich. Uh, I, finished, <laughs> I finished the last. You're welcome. Of, man, and I could not shut my mind off. I was like, it, it was, my mind is going nuts because of all the possibilities that I didn't really dig into before reading the book, mm, which is oh, a powerful so thing. So I guess I just want to encourage you as well. I'm, 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 uh, I'm regretful for you that it took 20 years, but hopefully it only take a couple for the next book to come out. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I've already have some ideas for that one. It will definitely be a parable. The next one is I just, I loved the process. It was just so cool yeah. writing it. And, yeah. And you know, and, and it really, it was very growth oriented for me in the sense of, like I said, thinking about John, the mentor and really thinking about what advice and how does he show up and, and what's the, what's the gap between me and him and how can I be more of that? And it's just, I, I just started showing up more powerfully and, you know, as a better human in my life, as I was thinking about becoming him, that was, yeah, really powerful. Kind of like the eulogy, but before he dies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I love the, I love the, uh, the idea that every one of their, like, for the most part, every one of their, you know, coaching sessions, mentorship sessions was like doing something outdoors, doing a challenging activity, you know, rappelling down the side of a cliff, do, mountain biking, like all these cool things outdoors early in the morning. Like it, it, that fired me up also, you know, like David and I just say, hey, we need to get to the mountains. We need to get outside. We need to go do stuff. Mm. And it, it was super motivating to me too. So I'm curious what, what, you know, being that the action seeker that you are, what's your, what's your favorite outdoor activity that, that you do? 
Ooh, that's a hard one. I would, <laughs> I, I would have to say the, the one that gives me the most fulfillment is rock climbing. Okay. Something about that there's, it's very peaceful and grounding and it's like, I love surfing, but there is a little bit of that aggro in the lineup that, you yeah. know, you know, it's scarcity because it's like my way, my way. So yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Especially if I was alone out there, which I've had, and that's amazing. But climbing is like a different type of community. People are always like, hey, do you want to jump on our rope? Or you want to, you know, they'll give beta to each other and all that stuff. So I love that. But I mean, it's, I love it all. I also love skiing. That's what got me into adventure sports. And, you know, so in the winter, it's skiing. Nice. Well, next time, uh, next year, when you're in Colorado, at some point, you got to hit us up because we are uh, huge snowboarders as well. So it's, awesome. uh, it's, it's something that, that, and fly fishing, I would inc- highly encourage getting out of the mountains because the way we do it is, super long hikes fishing holes and just hitting it being in nature it's amazing so i, I just throw that out there as a recommendation you have some beautiful awesome. uh, i've never tried it but... in california yeah, yeah it's incredible so i'm curious so you were you your kind of base is coaching and then you started this business which is effectively uh, uh i say basis coaching you started out um you know you mentioned starting out coaching building that business up speaking and and this naturally transitioned you know, this, this business you guys are running now, can you talk to us a little bit about what your business currently is and, and how coaching plays a role in that as well? Sure. Yeah, we have, uh, we've had as many as 27 employees and, and then we have property teams that we refer to around the country. We help educate investors and refer them to uh, these property teams that are separate businesses. So um, we, right now we have about 15 of those. We just got back from uh, Florida two days ago from having a mastermind with all of them, which is amazing. We're just talking about best practices and how we can serve people better and all that good stuff. But um, with that said, it's, the coaching is carried over to real wealth in the sense of, and Kathy's also a certified coach. Once I got certified, she started to see my communication skills improve a lot. She's, <laughs> this is from her word. She's like, I don't want to be left behind. So she went and got certified as a coach as well. And um, so it's our, the style of coaching that we were trained in. We went to the coaches training Institute and it's very Socratic. It's very much about drawing out. It's not teaching. It's not, um, it's not really that mentor, like a mentor I see is like been there, done that. And then if you do what I did, you'll be where I am coaching. I really see the pure coaching is like really drawing out from something simple questions. Like, what do you want? What could you do? What will you do? How will I know you did it? Um, that's the basics of it. Of course, it goes a lot deeper and you, you know, you learn to ask really powerful questions. Um, but the, uh, bringing that to our business and our company, has been transformational in the sense of our culture. Um, we do quarterly conversations with everyone does a quarterly conversation with someone with their, um, the person they report to and, and all that. So I have the leadership team that I do quarterly conversations with. And it's basically, it's a, com- it's a coaching conversation. How are you doing? Where are you at? Is there anything that's frustrating you? What are, where do you see yourself in five years um, here? Do you, see, do you still see yourself here at Real Wealth or moving on? Uh, what's your dream? What are your core values? So what do you know? Do, and do they align with our core values? So I think that type of coaching and really empowering people. I mean, we're a remote company. We have been for over 10 years now and uh, 12 years now, actually. So there, there needs to be something with a remote company like that, where you're not looking over people's shoulders and you have to really empower and have everyone be a leader. So we're a company of leaders and constantly just checking in and seeing how people can have their own goals and be accountable to those goals. And um, so the coaching plays a huge part in that. So I'm curious also, um, you know, I I know you guys are primarily into the single family rental space, and I know you've done some development work and some, some new buildings and stuff like that, but correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have never really gotten into, you know, apartments and syndic like commercial buildings of any sort, uh, to, to my knowledge. And I'm, I'm curious if that's the case, you know, why, why stick just with single families? You know, most investors, most investors will go from kind of single family stuff and that kind of grow into apartments, commercial multifamily kind of stuff. So right. kind of curious why you guys have solely stuck in, in single family. 
It's a great question. Yeah. Um, well, we did get try it out and we failed miserably. So that's part of it. Mm. Um, basically, we were, we, um, yes, we started off in 2003, helping people get into single family properties, one to four units in uh, emerging markets. And then um, it was 2010, we had a developer come to us and say, hey, there's this project. This is after the whole fallout and Lehman Brothers collapsed and all that. And he said, there's this project up in Portland and um, it, it, they, have, they are 20 million into it already. He owns, uh, he owes 8 million on his construction loan and can't get it refinanced and can't pay it. And he said, so we can come in. He goes, I've negotiated with him already. We can get him out for 3 million. And so we did our first raise. It was our first syndication and took that over and finished the project. It was a, a 40 year developer, 40 years of experience. So really good to have someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah. And that went really well. Investors got a 22% return on their money. Um, we invested in as well. And so we were like, oh, this is cool. So we started to syndicate more of that type of that type of syndication. And then after doing about four of those syndications, and we're like, well, okay, now we graduate. And now we do the multifamily thing. So um, there was in Indiana, we bought, uh, we invested in these three uh, big apartment buildings. We sent someone on our team out to go vet it, to walk through them. He walked through one of the buildings and was shown one of the buildings that was all rehabbed and nice, not knowing that the other two were just complete destruction. Um, and so anyway, it just ran into major problems on, then there was theft and people stealing all the copper out of there and all that. So it just, it just, it really more than, more than anything was Kathy. She's just like, okay, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to do multifamily. We don't know it. It's not our lane. Let's stay in our lane. And I think that was a really good decision on her part because then we just would focus on, we, we just know the residential development is, our lane. And so that's what we've done. Now we've done ground up developments, probably about a dozen of them. And we do ground up either entitling it and then selling it to a major home builder or going all the way through to completing, you know, a, a full subdivision of single family homes. And that's been really great. So it's kind of like our lane and we're just sticking in our lane because it's what we really know and let other people who are great at multifamily do what they do. Like we have, you know, like Ken McElroy is a good friend of ours and we just learned so much from him and he's just, you know, he's a professional who's got that down. Um, but then he's not, he doesn't know that much about the single family area, you know, it's really yeah. interesting. Well, I think there's a ton of power in, there's a ton of power in that. And, and, you know, when, when I talk to new investors, they're like, yeah, I'd like to really do this single family and move. And, and for some reason, I can't really explain why, cause it's kind of a pain in the butt. Single family realm is, is can be, can be a pain in the butt sometimes, but, but I love it. And Stu and I love single family homes. We love, you know, uh, everything you can do with it, whether it's Airbnb, you know, short term or, or yeah. you're providing a home to someone in maybe C, C plus neighborhoods. And, and as much as there are, is, is a pain to it, we also just, we love it. And, and that's yeah. really been a focus. And, and my advice to other investors is, Hey, find what you enjoy. Cause you, you may realize, yeah, you get more doors and it's sexy. Everybody's talking about you graduate and this language we use to go from single right. family to these other deals, but you may realize you hate it. Like you may realize you just hate, you know, we did a, a couple of mobile home parks and, and, and I don't think I'll ever do a mobile home park again. Cause it, it just, it's just not. Is it making money? Yeah. Is it awesome? Yeah, sure. And it's but a different skill not, set. And it's a different skill set. And it's not, uh, you know, we are very limited in our skill sets already. So we don't need to try to expand uh, in areas that we don't know. So especially it, it David. Just, yeah, especially me. But, uh, but I think giving people permission to realize you can be, have great success in that focus and, and you pick a, pick a lane and your guys' maturity to be able to not just keep banging your head against that wall, but just to really develop the business you have is, is, is a testament to what focus can do, which I think is, I think it's a, a phenomenal point. And, and I don't know, is it your partnership and you guys encouraging each other? Like what, what has gotten you to, to get to that next level? If you have advice for, for folks that are starting out, um, you know, and, and how to get focused in, in where they find that the highest and best. Yeah, it's um, a couple parts to that answer, really. Uh, you know, one thing that we have seen is that there are people in single family who have stayed in that lane and are incredibly successful. And when you look at some of the hedge funds who have, you know, 500,000 properties and they're doing really well, it's incredible. And I mean, it's, uh, how awesome has it been in sing to be in single family, right, over the last 
five years, especially incredible, especially with COVID and people wanting to move into single families and the, the profitability and the appreciation has been, has been crazy awesome. So I love that. And then coming back to Kathy and me, and it's like how we operate, we obviously have our different strengths. I'm much more of systems and structures and putting things like that in place. Kathy's definitely the, the visionary, the idea, the networker, the connector. Um, and she's just incredible in her sense of market research. You know, she just knows that's all she, she's obsessed with it. Market timing, um, knowing where people are moving, what's going to be happening. You know, she called out the whole, and she knew just from all her research and the experts she interviews and everything, she knew that the crash was going to happen in 2008. And I was like, nah, there's no way, you know? And she's like, no, I'm, I'm hearing this. And it's like, I was in complete denial. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's a really good partnership in that sense of like, um, kind of almost following her lead and then going in, in the beginning of the business, I was the chief support guy. That was my title. Yeah, and I was like, awesome. whatever she needed, I built the website. I got her, I took a radio show CD and burned it and turned it into an MP3 and uploaded it to this new thing called podcasts on iTunes back in 2005. So it's like, that's kind of been my, my role is to be the early adopter with technology and putting systems in place and then bringing the coaching to our team. And yeah, and she's got her role of just like seeing where things are going and making sure that we're prepared for that. So I'll put you on the spot on behalf of, of Kathy. Uh, is there another crash coming? Do, do we see you know another, another downturn? What do you think? She definitely does not think there's going to be another crash. No, it's a whole different world. Yeah, I get to sit you know on the other side of her office door and listen in when she's on like she's on that new the on the market bigger pockets podcast. She's one yeah. of the co-hosts of that now. And that's one of the things they talk about all the time like it's the crash or do we, do you focus on cash flow or appreciation and what's going to be happening here and so she has so many facts and data and and the cool thing is she interviews these just high level people um like john chang from marcus and millichap he's a chief yeah. economist over there and um so many people that she gets her real information mm -hmm. and i'll also add on to that is just like you guys we got our information from the boots on the ground right and it's amazing how like going through COVID and the news was saying uh, no one's paying rent anymore and, and all this. And it's like, did you experience, did you guys experience yeah, a lot right. of that? No, no. Same Everyone with was us. paying rent. Yeah. So we're hearing from our boots on the ground and our teams and, and our property managers and everything. They're like, no, it's like, we had 97% collections. It was just as strong. And yeah. so it's like, she, she's really obsessed about like not buying into the headlines. If anything, she looks at the headlines and then she used to be in the news. She, that's where she got her degree in, in com broadcast communications and she worked for Fox. She worked for ABC seven up in the Bay area. And so she knows that it's the old, uh, if it bleeds, it leads. Right. And she's yeah. trying to get, you know, impose fear and get listeners and readers and all that stuff. She knows it's all, it's all just bullshit. So <laughs> she Man, you, you married, you married up, Rich. I, just I sure did. <laughs> I sure did. I know that hundred percent, hundred percent and always. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious um, because of the priority you guys put on it. And it's such a huge part of student student in my life, but how old are your daughters? And, and if you don't mind kind of sharing where they are in life. Yeah, absolutely. So um, our older daughter is 29. Our younger daughter is 22. Our older daughter just gave us a grandson two years ago. So now we're grandparents, which is yeah. phenomenal. It's really, yeah. really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy's obsessed with him. It'd be yeah. so funny. I'll be just working here. And then our older daughter lives only 25 minutes away and I'll be working. All of a sudden I hear this little voice. She's like, I could, I had to go get him. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's really great. He's super fun. And uh, so older daughter is doing incredibly well. She bought her first house at 24 um, up in Chico, California. Um, it appreciated. She sold it and used the proceeds from that to buy their house here uh, close to Malibu. And, and so it's incredible. So she's doing really well. Now she's doing, uh, she's got her own, she's self-employed. She has an email marketing company and she's just crushing it. Uh, real high level clients and all. And then our younger daughter is 22. She just graduated from San Diego State with a degree in on entrepreneurship and business management. And she's taking a year to travel the world. So right now she's in Bali. This is the last time I checked. She's in Bali. Her boyfriend just went out there who's uh, also in the military. He's a Marine. Um, nice. So yeah, really cool. Great guy. Hope, hope he's my son-in-law someday. Yeah. And uh and yeah, so she's traveling all over. She spent time in um, 
she went to Thailand for uh, a couple months and you know, so she's gets, she gets back in June. So I miss her obviously. Yeah. That's incredible. Did, did you get, did you guys travel a lot when they were younger? Um, you know, we didn't have the money that much to travel a lot. So we did really inexpensive, really fun, connected family vacations, like going to Yosemite and camping out overnight and then going climbing together or doing family ski trips, you know, which are not cheap, but, you know, so we put our focus more on, you know, making the most of this state that we pay so much for taxes in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but making yeah. the mo- so much of California this, w- from the surfing to the climbing, to the hiking, to the biking. It's uh, we did a lot of things like that with our daughters for connection time. That's yeah, great. no, it's, it's funny. We're, I, I, I graduated from Mission Viejo high school. So, uh, Southern Cali oh, wow. and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're, we took a trip to San Diego, took the kids and are going to take them again, but really trying to imbue them with the, the travel and the, get the bug and see different parts of the world, see different things. So I, I just, I was curious because I think the, you know, one thing that I focus on is, is really what is the, whether it's a, whether my kids are watching, you know, me hug and kiss my wife and dance mm-hmm. and have fun so that, so that I, so my daughter has a model husband that she's going to look for. My sons have a model uh, of the husband that they should be like, it's so it's always present on our minds. And, and, and so you guys obviously being, you know, incredibly driven, but also very focused on your family. It just was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see how that turns out. Cause it, it gives me hope that, that, uh, you know, all the frustrations that we currently face with my young children will, will bloom into something different. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the best, you know, and so we had uh, Krista, our younger one, uh, Kathy interviewed her on the real wealth show all about just like financial lessons from, from a millennial. And she was saying the, the most important thing, and this seems counterintuitive, but uh, for a, for a kid I call her kid, she's not, but um, is that we never did handouts. When they mm-hmm. wanted something, we helped them find a way to earn it and how to be entrepreneurial. And they both want to be entrepreneurs. They both have found their own way. And that's what Krista said, which has surprised me on the interview was she's like, I'm so glad that you guys didn't give me handouts and that you showed me how to earn, make my own way. So that was, that's that was a huge awesome. one. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed so far, but we just use these podcasts as like mentorship sessions for, for ourselves. You know, we, just, we just ask all these questions that, that we're, we're thinking about <laughs> on that same note, you know, did, how, how did you uh, teach your, you know, your, your daughters uh, about the, the business, about, you know, all these things that you're teaching other adults uh, how to do, you know, did you get them involved in your real estate business? Did you kind of teach them entrepreneurship lessons along the way? Like how did you kind of ingrain them in in that mindset? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's definitely asking them to to, to help in some parts, you know, in, in paying them, you know, showing them. And then uh, our younger daughter, Krista still works for us. She does all our social media management. Uh, She just crushes it. She's amazing. She does, she's done more social media than our whole team combined, <laughs> right? <laughs> on her own. So, uh, so we brought her in on that and she's here. And so now she's handling all our social media from Asia right now. It's, it's super cool. So cool. yeah, bringing in then our older daughter, uh, she did a lot of our, uh, like um, running our events and webinars and all that in the beginning. And um, so that was huge lessons for her on kind of leading a team, being responsible and all that, that I think is she's carried over to her own business now. That's awesome. My, my seven-year-old uh, came back from school the other day. It's, it's uh, kind of end of the year and, and it's career day. So some parents are coming in and, and, and talking. I actually get to go today to talk about uh, flying helicopters, but uh, one person awesome. last week, um, he was like a, a, a sports radio host and, and she came home and she was like, dad, I want to do a podcast like you do. And like, you know, uh, NZ's dad does, I was like, awesome, let's do it. And so like, we actually, uh, started recording some little podcast episodes with her. Uh, she's reading kids books and she's going to call it the the kids book podcast. So I I was like, I I was like super stoked about that. Um, so, you know, it's awesome. They're they're always watching. The kids are always watching, you know, it's like, it's that, you know, not to do as I say, not as I do thing, right? You flip that around. And it's like, you know, do as I do. And it's like, when we walk the talk, when we show up, like you said, you're, you know, hugging, you're kissing your wife and dancing and all that, or doing a podcast or being an entrepreneur or being present with your kids, because you've created that type of lifestyle and business. I think that's yeah. what they're picking up on more than anything, more than anything we say. hundred percent. Yeah. I love it. Um, well, 
Bridge, I know you, you're a busy man. I know uh, you got lots of other things to do uh, besides just hanging out with the, us knuckleheads, but uh, we really appreciate you coming on. Um, I've learned a ton from this episode. Uh, I learned a ton just from reading your book um, and, and I would highly, highly recommend You know, I said before we started recording, this is going to be a book that I'm going to give out to people, you know, all friends awesome. that, that I have that I will be giving this book to people. So really appreciate uh, your, you know, everything that you've provided for us. It's, it's, it's been great. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been great to be here. You guys are fun. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. it. Well, thank you, Rich. And again, just want to encourage you. You're, uh, I know you've got you know, 60,000 plus in your network, but I think there's probably uh, quadruple that number of people that you're impacting. And, and you guys don't even know the number of people that listen to your shows, you and Kathy, the number of people that read your book, the number of people that that just plug into you guys. And and I just uh, am so grateful for your example. And, you know, I, we, like Stu said, we like leaving our podcast feeling like we owe our guests money because uh, they gave us so much mentorship. <laughs> so I uh, just really want to encourage you. you and, and we are extremely grateful for, for you and for what you do. And then for, you know, spending this time with us. So, so thank you so much. Thank you. I'm grateful for you guys. I love your focus. I love your attention of giving. Your whole business is all about giving and making a difference for people. Uh, it's like not you don't focus on the money first. You focus on the difference you make. So I appreciate that too. So back at you. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, so thanks, where, Rich. where do uh, where do people go and get the book, and where can they find more information about you and your business? Uh, it's on all major booksellers, but Amazon.com is definitely the best place if you want to keep it on the bestseller list or help me do that. It's been on the okay. bestseller list for a month now since it came out. I'm really stoked on that. Um, and then if you, uh, if anyone wants to learn more about the book, it's just thewiseinvestorbook.com, thewiseinvestorbook.com. Awesome. And we'll put all those in the show notes. Uh, so guys and gals, go check out the book. Go check out uh, Real Worth Network. Um, and, and all, all of that the, uh, they can offer uh, for education and the financial literacy. It's been great. Uh, huge, huge impact to me. Um, and uh, give us five-star reviews. We'd really appreciate it. If this made an impact on you, um, share it with somebody. Tell somebody else about this podcast. And uh, most importantly, go fill your storehouse. Hey, thanks, friends. Make it a great day. Thanks, Rich. See you later. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Filling the Storehouse. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe and share it with someone you love. And if you really felt inspired, leave a five-star review so we could continue to grow and help other Christian entrepreneurs fill their storehouse. If you're interested in creating financial freedom through real estate investing, be sure to check out our website at storehouse310turnkey.com. We'd love to serve you through our platform of building the kingdom. Just click on the contact link and we'll reply to you as soon as we can. Again, thanks so much for listening. Now go for your storehouse and make it a great day.